Hi guys, welcome to another episode of VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. All right, we're here for part three of Project Backmarker. We are just about to reassembly mode. Uh, while I had the car apart, I actually took all the suspension and cleaned it up best I could, put some fresh paint on a couple of the parts there, and also I powder coated a bunch of the brackets that came out of the engine bay. They turned out really, really nice. Uh, there's some other stuff in there I haven't really touched yet. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to replace it or, uh, or if I'm going to paint it as well. Uh, but right now I've got quite a lot of black, so I don't know if I want to add any more. Anyway, with fresh eyes, we kind of noticed that there was some red showing through in a couple spots. So we decided to do a little bit of touch up. For touch up, I kind of changed path a little bit. I have some uh, paint called Pour 15. It's uh, available through Amazon or through Eastwood. Uh, it's kind of a paint over rust type of paint. It also has a satin finish. It's actually really nice. I've noticed that even if you paint it on with brush strokes, once it dries, the brush strokes pretty much disappear. We used it to actually paint a roll cage recently and it turned out really nice. So I decided to go ahead and use that with this. Uh, the hardware is pretty hideous. In fact, if you look at some of the things on here, you can see quite a bit of corrosion. Uh, what I did for the hardware was I bought a can of carburetor dip. It's made by Berryman. Uh, and it actually did a really nice job of uh, restoring a lot of the bolts back to metal. Uh, I took the hood latch and it, it had been painted and looked really rusted and it turned out really nice. Uh, another thing I did was I was at the salvage yard recently and I noticed a couple of black TLs. So I went out and I snagged a bunch of the uh, fender bolts from the TL. They are nice. They were already black uh, and uh, they look good in the car. The last thing we'll be working on is the wiring harness. I need to do a multi-port conversion on this harness, so that means some wires are going to have to be run to the ECU. I went ahead and pre-ran one wire that I should be able to use to pull through the other four wires I need to convert to multi-port. Multi I also went ahead and added another wire because eventually when I switch to OBD1, I'm going to have to pull another uh, handful of wires as well. I think the best thing to do with the loom it, and the wiring harness that's in there is just go ahead and strip it all down, clean it as best I can, and put all new loom and tape in it. Once I do that, it should look pretty good. Then I have to figure out how to attach it. You can't really buy the little uh, zip ties that Honda used to use way back in 88 for this car. So I came up with a different solution. There are these little clips that plug into the hole that's already in the engine bay and it has just a slot opening in it so you can use just a regular zip tie on it. It's really nice so that if I make any changes I can just cut, cut the zip tie and I won't have to uh, ruin the entire anchor in order to uh, make a little change. As I rewrap all the wiring uh, I'm going to try and take care of some of the uh, jankiness going on here. Uh, this uh, interestingly uh, was uh, wired up for the JDM headlamps. Uh, funny, both sides had this one wire pulled out. I don't know if it's a, uh, a bright, I'll have to look at the wiring diagram, but I believe it's for the high beams. Uh, but it was pulled out and the um, regular uh, you know, low beam headlamp was wired. But I'll tell you, I absolutely hate butt connectors. I think they're the stupidest thing in the world. I mean, it's fine if you're doing a $1 install on a stereo, but for actually uh, doing something permanent with a car, I think uh, you know running new wire or soldering is the way to go. Uh, so I'm going to change these connectors out. Um, these are kind of interesting. These uh, little pigtails were uh, are offered by Password JDM when you buy some of the uh, headlamp kits and things like that from them. Uh, but uh, like I said, I'm just going to get rid of the butt connectors. Uh, so I'll probably just solder these up wires in here. Uh, the other thing was the side markers. This is the uh, side marker wiring that was in the car. Uh, basically, there were some bullet connectors to connect it uh, to the uh, wiring harness. But this was basically strung along the fender well with a bunch of zip ties, which means 
anytime you wanted to take loose the engine wiring harness, I'm sorry, the, the engine bay harness, you were gonna have to uh, take the fenders off. So I wanna make a little sub harness that goes in there so you don't have to do that. And uh, I'll also probably change connectors here. I have a bunch of these. These are old OBD-0 two-pin connectors. Uh, we used to use these for uh, conversion for ZC motors. So I got a pile of these. So these little two-pin connectors work really well. Uh, I also have the, the terminals here in a kit, including uh, the little wire, little wire insulators as well. So these will all get crimped on and uh, I'll string the wire through and it should look pretty good when I'm done. I select some wire that's the correct color for what I want to do. I went ahead and put terminals on one end. This is going to be down by the solder marker. Then, I'm, then I loomed it as well to kind of protect it. I left this side undone for the moment. Uh, I'm going to use it. To, I'm going to tape it to that other wire that I fed through and uh, then I'm going to use that other wire to kind of drag everything back through the frame rail. Um, Hopefully I have enough wire here. I did about 54 inches, that should be good. So these are the two plugs that normally go to a USDM side marker on here. One's a turn signal, one's a running light. Uh, the running light one was just totally taped off. Uh, we pulled it apart and it is the correct color. Had to clean it off, green, red with black. That matches what we put in for our side marker here. So I'm just going to basically cut this off and put the correct plug on for that and we will have a connection. these off and solder them. Uh, I went and looked at the wiring diagram to tell which one was a low beam and the high beam. They had it correctly connected. It's just this weirdness here with the with the grounds. Notice how they took, normally these are two separate wires. You've got one ground with the high beam and it's a plug and then you have another ground with the low beam and it's a plug. And both these grounds go back to the scan ground which actually attaches right here. Um, you don't need to use both of them. One of them is good enough. Uh, I might just go ahead and use both of them, but I'm going to shorten it up, clean it up, make it look a little bit better. Solder and shrink tube, that's how you do this kind of stuff. Or you just replace the wire with something new. Um, since I don't have any of these plugs on hand right now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just solder and shrink wrap these. One of the things you want to do after painting the engine bay is actually go back over all the, the holes, the threaded holes. Some of them are going to be used as grounds and if there's a fresh coat of paint there it's probably not going to work very well as ground. So get the right tap, get in there and uh, just thread through and just kind of clean up the, clean up the hole. It's not a bad idea to do all the holes actually because Sometimes, if there's enough paint there, stick with this kind of globbed on, it may cause the bolt to try to go in sideways and strip out the threads.
all, I think the engine bay turned out really nice. I mean, there's still some work I can do. Some of the fixtures need to be cleaned a little bit more. Uh, some of the fittings have some rust on it and stuff like that. But I think it's good enough to go ahead and install our ZC motor. I'm not sure what episode is going to be next. We might go try to find some brakes for this thing. We're going to do a disc conversion and get some bigger front brakes. But also, we have our ZC motor and we're going to need to do some wiring in order to get it ready to go in the car. So anyway, if you like what you saw, please consider subscribing to Project Backmarker and we'll see you soon.